Every hotel on the Strip has been booked for weeks in anticipation of this heavyweight showdown. Celebrities have been pouring into town and the betting action can only be described as phenomenal. Oddsmakers have installed the champ Newton Moore as a 3-1 to one favorite over Mustafa Brown in their long-awaited rematch scheduled for 7 o'clock tomorrow night live from the Las Vegas Palace. All seats have been sold out and the promoters are predicting a record pay-per-view audience. Spectators and media representatives from all over the world are here as the fighters arrive for a tense last-minute training session. Scotch? Yeah, right on top. So, who we got over there? Never seen her before. Think she's a fight fan? Let me ask. The gentleman would like to buy you a drink? The old guy? That's Johnny Rose, the champ's trainer. Champagne cocktail. Very good. Careful of that one. She don't look too tough. That's the most dangerous kind. Who might drink down the end? Five minutes. Oh, boy. He picked the girl up in the Cactus Bloom Lounge. He took her up to his room, and after that, blotto. What did she take? A Rolex watch, some jewelry, and a couple hundred bucks from his wallet. Mr. Rose, yeah. I'm Christy Cooper with the hotel. We're doing everything we can. No police. I got a wife, OK? Where's head of hotel security, Mike? Beats me. He wasn't answering his phone. What? It's 4 o'clock in the morning. Where the hell is he? No help. Pair of 10, still high. Check to the sevens. Same. So who do you like in the fight tomorrow night, Doc? What fight? 2,500. It's too rich for me. Too rich for the Doc. Up to you, Tommy. I'm in. Time. I'll get it. <clears throat> Somebody want to open a window? So, Tommy, how do you like working here? Yeah, what's the story? You running the place? Yeah, sure. He's a bellhop. Are you in or out? I'm thinking. Mm. Looking for Tommy Logan? Yeah. Hey, Tommy. What? Your girlfriend's here. What? Hey. Thanks. Can I speak to you for a minute? Yeah. Why don't you gonna introduce us? Thank you. Who's he? Doc Belko, fight doctor. He's working the fight. How'd you find me? I just look for the noisiest room with the sleaziest people. Look, we've got a problem. One of the fight trainers was fleeced by a pickup he met in the Cactus Bloom Lounge. So? 
You're head of hotel security. Oh, yeah, right. From 2018, his name is Johnny Rose. Johnny Rose? Champ's corner guy? I better get into it. Damn it. What? I got a hot hand trip tent. What? A winning hand. Hey, look, this guy's gonna fold. We got a half hour break after. You know poker, right? You can sit in. What? All I need is a butt in the chair. <gasps> nice. You sit in, he folds, I win the pot. How hard is that? Well, what if he doesn't fold? Guys, uh, come on, come on, come on. A little change in strategy here. There you go, right there. She's playing my hand. Go easy on her, thanks. I checked with the locals. A lot of players are in town, probably a couple old friends of yours. Fight night brings all the low life out of the baseball. Hey, hey, watch you calling names, okay? I used to be considered a low life myself. Okay, we're gonna hang on to these, see if we can lift a print. Okay. Hey, expensive taste. Classy guy. Yeah. Uh, assistant night manager. Yeah. That's for you. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It's me. Tell me they're not calling a break. What do you want me to do? Did you win the first hand? Yeah, but uh, now they're playing straight through to a six. Get out. But I got two jacks and two kings. Really? Who else is playing? Me and the guy in the baseball cap. He's got two queens on the table. Is he picking his teeth? Yeah. How'd you know? Fold. Get out, okay? Bye-bye, Christy. I gotta go. Still up to you, sweetheart. Need a little help, honey? No. I think I'm getting the idea. The bet is a thousand? Mm-hmm. Raise. Mr. Rose was here. She was down there. Real slick. I didn't have a chance. You still have the glass? Oh, yeah, it's right here in the sink. I rinsed it out. No won't matter. Thanks. Ooh. Twelve-year-old scotch with a scopolamine shooter. What? It's a Mickey industrial strength. Um, see, she had black hair? Yeah. Kind of up in a thing. <laughs> Oriental. How'd you know that? Okay, let's see what we got here. To Johnny Rose, always in my corner, Newton Moore. How am I supposed to move this? It's an engraving. Attack on 40%, you sell it as memorabilia. You can erase it. Look it. A dozen Rolexes. The strip's lousy with. Well, Swatch don't pay my rent, okay? You want it or not? What are you getting so hot and bothered about? I'm working on something. 300. Five. 350. I'm out of here. Hey, relax, would you? It's a negotiation. The champ is on the scales, ever confident that he'll come out Champions. victorious. Newton the renowned fight doctor, Ernie Belko, Please. carefully adjusts the counterweights. 235 pounds. Is that with or without the sunglasses? I believe that's with the sunglasses. And now we'll get the weigh-in of the challenger. In or out? I'm watching Doc at the weigh-in. 246 pounds! 246? That's a lot of biscuits. What do you think, Fred? Well, it's 12 pounds heavier than he was for the first fight, Billy, and there have been a lot of stories about Mustafa since these two first met in December. The nightlife, the legal problems. His head might not be in this fight. 
That's to you, honey. You know, I'm trying to figure where I know you from. You've probably seen one of my movies. No. That's not it. Come on, come on. Call. Full boat. Queens over eights. It's a nice hand. The only thing that beats it is four of a kind. Or a straight flush. To the ace. Change the deck. We just did. What time is it? A little after eight. Oh, I have to get ready. What are you talking about? Oh, I can't play anymore. I have to go to work. You <laughs> move. You can't leave. Why? I mean, I won, didn't I? <laughs> We're playing Vegas rules here. Didn't your boyfriend tell you that? He's not my boyfriend. What are Vegas rules? As in Las Vegas, Nevada? Governed by the rules and bylaws established by the Nevada State Gaming Commission. Vegas rules say you take an excess of three grand off the table, you got to play through to the next break. When's that? Noon. Noon? Otherwise, you forfeit. And your money stays here. But I won this money. Ugh, give me a break. Look, I have to be downstairs dressed and ready for a photo op with the president of the hotel at 9.30, sweetie. Modified Vegas? What's that? Does, that? does that mean I can go? Yeah, in an hour. But first, we switch chairs. What? Hey, I don't make the rules. Oh, well, all right. I have to make a phone call. Excuse me. Hello? Mike, hi. How's it going? It's a zoo. Where are you? Um, I'm running a little late. Can you hold down the fort? Well, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Listen, have you seen Tommy? Tommy Logan? Uh, no, not recently. <sighs> That's right, Fight Fans. The title bout is sold out. This is the fight America's been waiting for. Can the champ Newton Moore hold on to his heavyweight title, or will Henry Mustafa Brown take him down? Well, I'll find out this Monday night, the 11th, live from the Las Vegas Palace Hotel. or a cop or something. So I thought you're still in jail. Huh. I understand you're working the Cactus Bloom Lounge over at the palace. Yeah? What's it to you? Nothing, just coincidence. I work there, too. How about a drink? No, thanks. I don't like your brand. <laughs> you know, I detect a lot of nasty undertones to this visit. What's up? What's up? To Johnny Rose, always in my corner. Where'd you get that? Same place you fenced it. Oh, Eugene gave it to you? I bought it. How much? Seven fifty. <laughs> so you coming. Maggie, do me a favor, okay? Keep the cash for the watch and just give me that guy's wallet and credit cards back and stay out of my hair, okay? Well, I got no use for the plastic, but the rest of it spoils the war. No way. Boy, you really have changed. Well, what can I say? It's the new me. <laughs> Unfortunately, Tommy. I'm still the old me. This is not smart, Maggie. Hey, look, I will kill you if I have to, so do me a favor and sit down.
It's locked, man. I gotta get a locksmith. How we all doing today? Great. Camp looks pretty good. Too bad this Mustafa Brown is such a lox. Uh, 246? Woo! What's he rated? Number 23? Ah, huh? oh, you might have made some money on this thing, Arturo. That bad, huh, Si? Put it this way. If the pay-per-view doesn't kick, you're lucky to break even. Lucky for you, I see a way out of this thing. I know a guy who knows a guy who can put us in touch with some representatives, shall we say, from the Soviet television. Soviet television? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what the people for Soviet Union need to take their minds off their problems. What are you laughing? Come on, a big, splashy American spectacle. That sounds a little fly-by-night, Si, no? Oh, well, forgive me for trying to help out here, Art. I'm just trying to help out a client. Hey, listen, come on. I want to see you coming here from a position of strength, not from a position of need. I mean, the fact that it may even put a few rubles aside for my kid's education, uh -huh. that doesn't enter my thinking at all. Oh, no. I mean, if I ever have kids. <laughs> all right, fellas. What? Norton. OK. Where you going? Oh. For tomorrow night, huh? Oh, yeah, all right, all right. Marvin, get over here, man. Let the press get a look at you. This is my nephew, guys. He's looking at the next great heavyweight. <laughs> Folks, we got to get him toweled and ready for the cameras in a couple of minutes. Thanks for coming. No problem. They behave as long as there's plenty of food. Yeah. <laughs> Any predictions, Mr. Tow? Careful now. <laughs> well, let's just say I hope we have a huge gate. Hmm? And uh, discretion is the better part of valor. But I will say that in my prime, to quote an ex-champ, neither of these tomato cans could have held my jockstrap. You better watch yourself, old man. Who's an old man, huh? Oh, we'll be looking at the next great white hope here. <laughs> More like the next great white hope less. Hey! Watch yourself now, watch yourself. Oh, right, hey, Bob hey, and hey. weave, Arturo, Bob and weave. Don't want to give you no heart attack. What heart attack? Here we go, save yourself. Run for cover. Let's get it on. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh. Hey, champ! You nailed it pretty good. Hey, no, I'll be better against the stop. That's it. That's it. I quit. I quit. I had to let him look good. Man signs my checks. <laughs> hey, Arturo. You just get lucky, or is the champ slipping? Hey, Newt. Hope you're gonna do better against Mustafa. Tommy. Where have you been? Car trouble. I, I have some bad news. What? I lost. Define lost. As in all of it. Oh, boy. Plus $3,000 of my own money. I kept getting great cards. It was like I had the lucky chair or something. The lucky chair? I was up $4,000, and then I moved to Rizzo's chair, and, the, and then the roof caved in. I don't know. Rizzo's chair? In front of all its mirrors? What a hayseed. Oh, sure. Blame the victim. I'm not blaming. Oh, yes, you are. They're your friends. I thought they were trustworthy. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking 1954, Chicago Stadium, the able kid Jessup, pop, 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 and Pepe Montez. Remember Pepe Montez? Eh? You? Huh? The both of you are twice my age. You don't remember either of these guys? I mean, I'm talking bloodbath. Bloodbath. I, I mean, I'm a little boy, but I still remember. I was there. I remember. I guess you've been everywhere, Mr. Herzog. You said it, Nolan. Anywhere and everywhere. I've been there. I've seen them all, the great and the small. Right? Bartender, oh, but change for a 20, huh? <laughs> so in the fifth round, I was there. I remember. I'll talk to you, okay? Hey, Ray. In the fifth round. Hey, Sai. Hey, This Tom. gentleman was just stealing your wallet. <laughs> what? How about that? Come here, Weasel. Come on. Hey, you almost pulled it off, too. So, like I was saying, in the fifth round, Montez, he's got a cut. Get in there. <laughs> Take it easy, Tommy. What are you doing here? I'm taking a break from the game. <laughs> I'm having a drink. In Vegas? Everybody knows the L.A. card parlors are your regular hustle. So I'm in for the fight, all right? Don't give me that stuff. You know, all week I'm running into operators I haven't seen in 10 years. Every con, every low-rent grifter. They even got Maggie the cat working the drunks in the Cactus Bloom Lounge. Maggie's here? 
Yeah, friend of yours? Yeah, she owes me money. So what's up, huh? Is the word out that I'm working here? Is that what's going on? Can I tell you, kid, huh? Good news travels fast. <laughs> what can I tell you? Good news travels fast. Oh, that's original. Well, look at it from their perspective. I'm sort of a legend, like Robin Hood. Yeah, but you kept all the money. I said like Robin Hood. I want all the sleaze out of this hotel, period. Boy, sore loser. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I guess I'd feel the same way if I was dumb enough to get clipped for 3G. I mean, nobody made you play. Nobody made me play? All right, take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? I'll get your money back. Did you leave your water running? Look, I'll straighten everything out. Just don't make such a federal case out of everything. Maggie Christie, Christie Maggie. She's the one who rolled Johnny Rose. Get a blanket, will you? What for? Dry her off. Why? She's wet. <sighs> there you go. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. good. That's good. That's good. <sighs> what are you doing? I've got to call the police. Don't. Why? A, this is my room and I'm on parole. B, I was the last person to see her alive. I I'm not going to go to jail because of you. And then there's C. She wasn't dumped here by accident. Somebody's making this my problem. Well, we can't just leave her here. I mean it. Cigarettes, matches. What are you looking for? Man, the old grifter trick. Stash in the shoe. This? What? Betting slips. She rolls the trainer, she figures the watch is a bonus, right? But this was her big score. He put 120 grand down on the fight. So? He bet against his own man. Newton Moore's gonna take a dive. The fix is in. What if somebody sees us? Shh. Don't shush me. You know, this is really insane. You got a better idea? Call an ambulance. Christy, she's dead. Well, call a coroner. Talk about grace under pressure. Well, you act like this is an everyday event. No, it's definitely a new one. Push. Uh, oh. Okay, okay. Relax, you're making me nervous. I'm making you nervous. Just trust me, all right? I know what I'm doing. You're doing great so far. Oh, Mr. Taft. Christy, Tommy. Oh, good. Uh, hold the elevator for me. This thing's a little more pepper. Hit the lobby for me. So, how goes it? Great. Terrific. What's this? What? The laundry cart. We found it in the corridor. Tommy thought we should take it to housekeeping. Housekeeping's in the sub basement. I know. But we're going up. For you. Because you're going up. A lot of excitement around here today. You said it. <laughs> Maria, are, are you going down? Let's let Maria take the cart down. No, that's OK. Oh, she'll take very good care of it. I need to talk to you. Oh, I can't wait. What? I mean, uh, sure. No problem. You too.
All right, what's going on? I understand we had a bit of a situation in the bar last night. Newton Moore's trainer? That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, where are we with it? We're on top of it, sir. Any new developments? Uh, uh, a few. We're coordinating with the locals right now. At this juncture, it's sort of technical. I suppose this kind of thing can happen no matter how tight the security. No, oh, please. I mean, it's not as if we can ask identification from every woman who walks into the Cactus Bloom Lounge. Is that... That's right. Oh, can I say it happens, you know? Yeah. You'll keep me posted? Absolutely. Yeah. Has anybody seen Maria? You seen Maria? No. Tell me. Oh, boy. OK, you start over there. I'll do here, and we'll meet in the middle, all right? Uh. Hey, it's going. All right. <laughs> for a cufflink. Somebody lost it. Uh, very valuable, mucho valuable loso. Tommy, what? I found it. Oh, <laughs> what a great little detective she is, huh? <sighs> we'll take this ourselves. Thanks very much for your help, Excuse though. Excuse me. Mr. Taft, thanks for being a great job, really. <clears throat> Jeez, let's go. Hi. And where are we going? Some place we can stow her for a while. You're not putting her in my room. Just for a couple of hours. No! Would you keep it down? Show some respect for the dead. Okay, come on, push. Christy, come on, you gotta buy me some time. That does it. What are you doing? I'm pushing the alarm. If you don't come up with a better plan in two seconds, I'm gonna do it. Will you calm yourself? I will not. I have had it. Do you hear me? Yeah, fine. Okay, just let me think. Here we are at the newly renamed Newton Moore Youth Center. It's been a long time since you've trained here, hasn't it, Jen? You know, you come up in a place like this and the walls start talking to you. This is like a page out of a family album, Bill. What do you remember, Newton? I remember a little boy <laughs> afraid of his own shadow, scrawny, shy, but he had his dreams. Hey, kid, do you know who this is? He's a champ. That's right, the heavyweight champion of the world. And I grew up right here in this community center, right here in North Vegas. I ain't afraid of you. Oh, you think you're tough, huh? Come on, little man. Oh, you think you can whoop me? No, but someday I will. Well, all right. Believe in yourself. You can be anything you want to be. Come here and give me a hug. <laughs> you care what happens to these kids, don't you? Hey, more than anything in the world. See, that's the whole reason behind the Moore Foundation. Now, your fans know you as a violent man. Do you think they'd be surprised to see a more compassionate, gentler side to Newton Moore? We live in a violent society, Bill, and I earn my living with my fists. And believe me, I am proud of what I've accomplished. But hey, I don't like hurting people. See, I believe that God has put me on this earth for a special purpose. That's what Newton Moore is all about. Thank you, champ. Sure, anytime. Now, you get the word out on this place. You hear me? <laughs> you can't buy a hand. Hey, lady. My baby. I raise. Anybody order from room service here? What's going on here? Hold the door open, will you? <laughs> I'm back for some more, are you? I'm not talking to you. What is this? Are you selling blankets now? <sighs> Who's in there? Maggie the cat. Well, what happened to her? She ran into a mark without a sense of humor. Ugh, poor kid. What'd you bring her here for? Had a parker here for a while. Are you uh, crazy? Hey, hey, no come on. Here. Come on, I'm on parole. Hey, you think you're the only one? All right, let me try. Guys, you hustled me this morning. 
So let's get to the bottom line. You babysit our friend here, or I call Detective Sherman Thomas of the LVPD. We have a very special relationship, he and I. Cooperation is the key word. Do me this favor, and who knows, maybe I'll even comp your next trip. Now, how's that for an offer? Is the lady gracious or what? <laughs> we'll see you later. Let's play poker. Champagne. I'm with the commissioner's office. Would you step into the car, please? Sure. So, what does the commissioner want with me? Well, it's come to our attention that a member of the champs entourage has wagered a substantial sum of money on the outcome of a fight tomorrow. Now, not only is that a uh, violation of the Commission's bylaws, but it also raises a serious red flag that the outcome of the fight might be prearranged. No way. I train my fighters to win, not to dump. Well, then, uh, how do you account for these betting receipts, sir? Laney, at least you're still up. Anybody want something from the bar? Uh, I'm okay. How about you, sweetheart? <laughs> she don't ask for much. Yeah, perfect woman. Oh, sure. The only kind of woman you could ever win a hand off of. Look, I told you. I don't know nothing about no fix. What about the girl? I don't know nothing about that either. She didn't try to contact you, threaten you with blackmail? No. Hey. What's all this? You gonna tell him? Or do I? Tell me what? I'm sorry, champ. <laughs> what, he killed somebody? No. I put some money down on the fight. This guy's from the commissioner's office, and they're looking to pull your license. This is for real. I'm afraid so. Tell him the rest. I bet against you, kid. Oh, man. And there are other questions of impropriety here. What impropriety? Fight fixing and murder. I told you before, I don't know nothing about no murder. I want the commissioner and everyone else to know that I had nothing to do with this. Stop. It's over. Man. It's over now. Shut up. Tell him, man! Tell him why it is you never take them glasses of yours off. All right, Judas. You want to know why he bet against me? Because he don't think I can win. You can't! I can see, damn it. I can see. He's got a detached retina in his right eye. Mustafa's is gonna work him over on that blind side of his. This is gonna be a bloodbath. I can still take him. I can't. You can't take anybody anymore. You can't even take me. What a disaster. Everybody should have known something was up when the boss caught him with that schoolboy left. Now, what are you going to do? But what? Shouldn't the commissioner's office issue some form of a statement? She doesn't know. Uh, know what? Mr. Champagne isn't exactly affiliated with the commissioner's office. Who exactly is he affiliated with, Tommy? Custodial services. 
housekeeping. <laughs> hey, I had to think of something. That's it. I'm telling the police. Wait a second. Whoa, whoa, look. A dead woman was found in my room. I'm on parole. As far as the law is concerned, I killed her, and you're an accessory. Just excuse me for a minute. I'm not about to fall on a hand grenade while you improvise. Do you hear me? What do you suggest? Tell the cops the trainer killed the girl and take our chances. He didn't do it. Rose is on the periphery. Same with Maggie. Listen, go find the boss, tell him what happened, tell him he's got to cancel the fight, okay? What are you going to do? You'll know when I've done it, all right? Tommy! Hello? What? How are we supposed to do that? Tommy, man, we're in the middle of a game here. We'll do the best we can. What was that about? Maggie's checking out. Tommy? Come here. You just checked the betting line? Since midnight last night, Newton Moore's gone from a three to one favorite to even money. So? Millions of dollars flooding in on Mustafa Brown. Um, am I missing something here? Both fighters have to pass a comprehensive medical exam before the state will license the fight. Retinal damage is the first thing they look for. They had to have had their eyes checked. Go tell the boss, will you? Come on. Hey, Doc. Doc Belko. Hey, Doc. Tell me. Can I come in? Mm. Guess you heard they're calling off the fight, huh? Yeah, fortunes of war. Why'd you do it, Ernie? What are you talking about? Starting off on the champ's eye exam when you knew he had a detached retina. I don't think I like what you're implying. Bookies got their hooks in pretty deep, huh? Look, I made an evaluation. I stand behind it. What'd they do, Ernie? Promise you a big piece of the action? You got a big mouth, Tommy, you know that? <laughs> Enrico Manfredi. Well, I get it. How much does this quack owe you? The grass is too tall for you, Tommy. There's millions at stake here. Is that why you killed Maggie? Heh. <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. I suppose you're going to tell me it was euthanasia. She got in the way, Tommy. Just like you. This is not smart, fellas. Yeah, well, I guess I'm a stupid guy. At least he's self-aware. This way. some interesting friends. My advice? You want my advice? You sue. You sue everybody. You sue the fighter, the trainer, the boxing channel. Come on, you're looking at major exposure here. You come out with six guns blazing, at least we go down the hail of bullets. Sorry. Give me a minute, huh? No problem. How you doing? OK. Mm. 
to quit him, Marvin. Is he gonna be all right? Yeah. He's a pretty tough character. It takes more than just one bullet to bring him down. You know, I don't know whether you've ruined my life or saved it this weekend, but I think I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. So what about Maggie? Oh, don't worry about Maggie the cat. She's gone to a better place. Why'd you stop me? You still haven't told me why you stopped me. You can't just pull somebody over and tell me you want to look in their trunk. This car is a rental. There's nothing in the trunk. I don't believe this. I wasn't speeding. I won't do it. Just open the trunk, sir. Harassment. That's what it is. It's harassment. You've got no right to do this. No legal right. Oh, God. Well, this may not be the fight America wants, but it's the fight America's gonna get. And you can feel the excitement building in this incredible Cinderella story in the making. Marvin Moore, nephew of the great champion, a young man untested against an opponent of professional caliber, turns pro tonight as he upholds the family banner. The odds makers are taking a wait and see attitude, but as we've been telling you all week, Mustafa is 15 pounds overweight, and Bill, this could be a real Cinderella story. The young fighter is getting some last second advice from his uncle, injured in a bizarre shootout. And, and there's, there's the bell. Thank you, Doctor. Excuse me. There you go. Thanks. Yes. Well, I guess I should be happy. The boss gets his fight, and the champs or finished kiss their money. Yeah, we don't get sued. That's a plus. Well, you're a man. Answer me a question. <laughs> what would you like to know? What kind of sport is it where somebody's willing to sacrifice their eyesight just to win? A sport that pays $10 million for one night's work. I think it's macho garbage. You know, it's tough to quit when you're on top. Oh, boxing as a life metaphor. Two men stripped to the elements, soul against soul. It's no metaphor. It's just two guys beating the crap out of each other. Oh, I think it's kind of sick. Well, I think you're going to like the results. Here. What's this? I laid some money down for us. <laughs> and you just won your 3000 back. You bet on the kid? What are you, nuts? Cinderella. Here's to real life.